Hello, old friend. Sheldon? Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> Can I have your phone number? That's funny. I, I always thought Howard was nature's way of saying the Wallowitz line ends here. <laughs> You're playing D&D. This whole apartment! The Big Bang Theory <laughs> is one of the most successful sitcoms in the history of American television. But behind the scenes, the cast is subjected to a set of strange rules and regulations. I have an inflamed larynx. <laughs> To dating prohibitions, these rules ensure that the actors are able to deliver remarkable performances every time. Damn it, I should have gone over and told her we were back. <laughs> Join us as we unveil 20 rules the Big Bang Theory cast had to follow. Number 20. The Dressing Rule. Every character on the Big Bang Theory has its own iconic dress code, one that each cast had to adhere to very strictly. From the first time this misfit group of friends burst onto the scene, each spawned a look that remained unchanged for the better part of the series. Really nice. Yeah, clearly one of us is dying. <laughs> From the stereotypical geek fashion of Sheldon Cooper to Leonard's unforgettable appearance, these stars had to maintain the same wardrobe throughout the series. Yeah, who remembers the guy who was trying to find India and discovered America instead? What was his name again? <laughs> There were exceptions to this rule sometimes, like Raj, who eventually went through a massive transformation in season 11. Kunal Nile's character was written to be more stylish. I'm having a really rough time. Like I said, I broke up with my boyfriend and it's freaking me munna, out. Munna, ba, ba, so. And his image and esteem were lifted a bit as a result of the slight change. Even Penny was subjected to this rule in the beginning seasons when her wardrobe was filled with girlish dresses. She eventually also gained more creative freedom to expand her clothing, but most of the other characters remained unchanged. For over 12 years... It's a joke. I don't get it. Yeah, he didn't tell it right. <laughs> most of the cast enjoyed little to no diversity in terms of clothing, and we have to watch them in the same dress code every single season. According to the producers, if the cast doesn't have to worry about what they'll wear for a scene, the brain power will be focused on getting the lines right and delivering an impeccable performance. A little Easter egg most people missed was Penny repeating the same outfit she wore in the first episode when filming the last episode. Even though it was just a tiny little detail, it added a lot of emotion to the last episode, bringing back memories of when the show was just in its cradle. Number 19. Without the top three, the show ends. Unlike shows like That 70s Show and The Walking Dead, where the story survives without the main characters, The Big Bang Theory was hinged solely on the shoulders of the top three casts. You're playing D&D. This whole apartment! Sheldon Cooper played by Jim Parsons, Leonard Hofstadter played by John Galecki, and Penny played by Kaylee Cuoco were the three musketeers who carried the show on their backs. On the occasion that any or all of the top three were to opt out of the series, the show would have been discontinued. As a matter of fact, It was this exact policy that ultimately killed the show. After Jim Parsons declared that he wouldn't be a part of the 13th season, the show's producers had no choice but to pull the plug. Even though Parsons wished the show would have continued without him. I have an inflamed larynx. <laughs> He had embodied the Sheldon character so much so that no one else would fit into those shoes. Most of the other casts had also become one with their characters, and it was inconceivable that any of them should be replaced or written out of the story. At the end of the day, fans remain grateful that we were able to peer into the lives of these incredible on-screen characters for 12 straight seasons. By replacing the slides from my lecture with photographs of nude fat women bending over. <laughs> Number 18. Cast had to learn science jargon. Apart from Mayim Bialik, who had a PhD in neuroscience, most of the other cast members weren't so versed in science. However, due to the nature of the show... Now, before this goes any further, you should know that all forms of physical contact, up to and including coitus, are off the table. Every major character was required to at least possess a basic understanding of science jargon. This was especially crucial in the roles played by Johnny Galecki and Jim Parsons, who were supposed to be seasoned scientists. Not surprisingly, most of these cast members have no idea what they're talking about most of the time. This also stands as a testament to their advanced acting skills, as it takes a whole lot to pretend to be a scientist. 
and nail it. Pretty cool. A lot of the girls threw up, but I gutted that thing like a deer. I'm, I'm sorry, Penny. I don't think so. Jim Parsons, for one, is quite talented in delivering smart talk. Even though he sometimes doesn't understand things like Sheldon does, Parsons works hard to ensure his line delivery comes out naturally. And die a slow, agonizing death from a viral infection, then work with you. He did this so well that very few people actually know that he isn't a science head like Mayim. While making an appearance on The Late Late Show with James Corden, Parsons took the audience behind the veil of Sheldon Cooper. When asked to write down a science formula, the audience couldn't believe their eyes or Parsons struggled on stage, even calling one formula a square rooty thing. It goes on to show that many of these actors had honed their skills so much that they were able to depict such knowledgeable characters without a deep understanding of the feeling. Now hang on, Leonard. Well, I have no respect for Leslie as a scientist, or a human being for that matter. <laughs> Number 17. The guys get shaved before each season. Take a glimpse into the lives of the male stars behind the scenes, and you will discover that most of them love to grow their beards. Hello, old friend. <laughs> So why do they sport their smooth faces while on the show? From Leonard to Sheldon to Raj, each of these actors grows their facial hair when on break between seasons. Some even take things to the extreme and start looking like they're out of a job. Damn it, I should have gone over and told her we were back. <laughs> But as soon as shooting starts, these actors have to show up with their faces as smooth as a baby's belly. According to the show's producers, leaving the characters with facial hair will contrast the personality being portrayed on screen. Imagine Sheldon Cooper or Leonard. I should let you know that I don't care for Luau, Toga, or Under the Sea. <laughs> who's supposed to possess a meek personality looking like a manly man with a fully grown beard. This would have definitely betrayed the plot. However, there were a few scenes that required that the men leave their faces unshaven, but these were only special episodes. Today, these actors are free to grow their beards as much as desired. It's not about that. And we agree to never speak of it again. <laughs> So we slept together naked. But while the show ran, they were bound by these strict rules. This proven strategy has helped the Big Bang Theory maintain the integrity of its characters and the plot that makes them come to life. Number 16. Performing in front of a live audience. For 12 seasons, the cast of The Big Bang Theory not only had to deliver incredible performances, but they also had to do it in front of a live audience. If you've ever watched the show, you should be familiar with the format at this point. First, the characters have a conversation. God, Leonard, that's incredible! <laughs> not so fast. And then there are frequent pauses in dialogue after the joke is delivered. During these brief pauses, you can hear laughter in the background, and sometimes the characters even wait for the laughter to subside before continuing. This format has become the standard for multi-camera sitcoms, but there's something special about the Big Bang Theory. Shouldn't you put them in a brown paper bag and set them on fire? <laughs> You see, unlike the many sitcoms of its time, the laughter happened so frequently and consistently that many people began to ask the big question, is this real laughter or a recorded laugh track? The answer isn't what most people would expect. Instead of relying on the usual laugh track used by other sitcoms, Sheldon? <laughs> Can I have your phone number? The producers of The Big Bang Theory chose to shoot in front of a live audience so as to add a layer of sincerity to the humor. Throughout its entire run, The Big Bang Theory was shot in front of a live studio audience. So when you hear the laughter, understand that it is the real deal. Shooting in front of a live audience also meant the actors had to up their game and deliver lines with minimal error. However, it is also worth noting that not every single scene could be shot before a live audience. Some parts had to be shot in other locations so sometimes laugh tracks were used to substitute real laughter. Yeah, well, I don't think it's very funny. Me neither, but he just lights up when I laugh. <laughs> Number 15. Learning to navigate the set. Many people don't know this, but each scene on The Big Bang Theory is shot on a set from Leonard's house to Penny's place. Everything is one giant setup. 
This is the way to Leonard and Sheldon's bedrooms. Their bedrooms, sorry. which bedrooms. they build on other parts of the set. Yes. So it's all... In this video, Raj and Howard takes the viewers on a tour of the entire set, starting from Leonard and Sheldon's apartment, then through every corner of the Big Bang Theory universe. Apart from offering the viewers a new perspective on the show as a whole... This is where we want to be as guys. Always, yeah. We always want to spend time in this room because it, it gets us in touch with our feminine side. It also revealed how complex filming must have been for the actors. Right before the camera starts rolling, every cast had to know exactly where to position, how to move from one part of the set to the other, and which door leads to where. Navigating through the maze of a set posed quite the challenge. So, all right, thank you. Nice you to go, see you. Thanks. <laughs> awesome. Very easy. Yeah, very thanks. easy, by the yeah. way. But it was required that every cast be able to make their way through without stress. So everyone had to learn the map of the whole place by heart, and it only took a short time before movements began to flow naturally. Number 14. Flash Dances and Encores the cast and crew of The Big Bang Theory developed a certain tradition over the years, which made the whole live audience experience even more exhilarating. Every single episode, the cast was prepared to break into flash dances at any point during the shooting. These shenanigans could occur at any point during the shooting, and everyone would join in the sudden dance routine. <laughs> for the enjoyment of the live audience. Everyone who was privileged to be part of the live audience looked forward to these flash dances. These dances would sometimes even last for minutes on end, as the audience also joins in on the fun, and everyone takes a break from the routine of filming. Then there's another tradition, this one reserved for the end of filming. After the episode had been completed, every cast member was required to appear for an encore. I swung by her apartment on the way to the restaurant. They're gonna be fixing it for a while. However, this encore wasn't the usual. Instead Instead of a simple bow, these actors would deliver a dance performance to the thrill of the audience. This was the part many members of the audience looked forward to the most, as it allowed them to see the actors in their most goofy moments. Since the flash dancing and unique encore moment became a staple on the series, it became a regular thing, and up till the last episode, the tradition was upheld by both cast and crew. Number 13. The Top 3 Earned More Money For the longest time, the exact amount earned by the actors who featured on The Big Bang Theory wasn't mainstream knowledge. But in 2014, everyone got the gist, and we couldn't keep our mouths closed. Back in the day, the top three actors on the series, Jim Parsons, Johnny Galecki, and Kaylee Cuoco, earned a mouth-watering sum of $1 million every single episode. This pay was significantly higher than what the other cast got paid, including the other secondary characters that were promoted to primary roles. Although a million dollars may sound like a lot of dough, the truth is, these actors worked for the pay. Without their brilliant lines and unrivaled acting prowess too tired to even be disturbed by that <laughs> sheldon mm, absolutely not the series would not even exist in the first place as it was these actors who did the bulk of the job to get the show up and running they deserved to be compensated for their skill and talent the variation in the pay however stems from the fact that the whole story was supposed to center on the top three characters every other character in the series was written around and for these three characters so it only made sense for them to get paid more but did this really sit well with the other cast members who also gave their all to ensure the show was a hit not really some of them fought back against the variation in pay, and while some actually won and got higher pay, others were just written out of the story. None of that is true. Uh, denial? See, sweetie, the list goes on and on. <laughs> Number 12. After Season 10, the top five earned equally. By the time Season 10 of The Big Bang Theory was drawing to a close, Howard and Raj had been prominently featured so much so that they had transformed into primary characters. Gone were the days when the top three got paid more. Now it was time for the top five. So from the 11th season, Simon Helberg and Kunal Nayar began earning as much as Parsons, Kuoko, and Galecki. Now the top three had to take a pay cut of $100,000, so everyone could make $900,000 per episode, which is still a pretty penny to be honest. Honest. Thanks, man. That's what my mom said. <laughs> Why don't you come in and have some parfait? For the next two seasons, there was no variation in the salaries of the major five characters who brought life to the show. Everyone from Helberg to Parsons was based on the same salary. I haven't been to a lot of parties like this, but what does a physics rumble look like? <laughs> Number 11. Melissa and Mayim's Salary 
In the world of the Big Bang Theory, how much money an actor made was based on how much value he brings to the show. For Amy and Bernadette, their role wasn't considered as important as the others, so they were paid much less than the other main actors. The pair were only added to the main cast in the fourth season, but from the fifth season, Melissa and Mayim were considered regulars, which means they weren't as important as the other actors. This also meant that they were paid much less than the rest of them. So that's what you get with a PhD in neuroscience. <laughs> Big Bang Theory and you're the spokesperson for graphing calculators. As a matter of fact, their original earnings were about $175,000. That's only 10% of what the top three were making at the time. Even though the duo were putting in the work just like everyone else, they were only getting paid a fraction of what the others made. At a point, the two couldn't take it anymore, and they took up with the producers demanding more pay. It was a tug of war between the two, as the producers even considered writing them off the series in case negotiations fell through. But as it would later turn out, Melissa and Maim never had to exit the show, and their income was raised to a more respectable sum of $500,000 per episode, which is still a very decent sum compared to the amount they initially earned. Even though it was only about half of what the main characters earned, $500,000 is still quite the sum to be honest, so neither Amy nor Bernadette ever questioned the raise. I still go to the supermarket and I still go places with my kids in a baseball hat and for, for Jim and for, for Kaylee especially. Number 10. The top three always get top billing. In the first few seasons of The Big Bang Theory, every story was centered around either Sheldon, Leonard, or Penny, while Raj and Howard only appeared as side characters without any stories of their own. For a very long time, Kaylee Cuoco, Jim Parson, and Johnny Galecki were the only focus of every storyline in every episode. Every other character who appeared was linked back to them one way or the other, and they enjoyed more screen time than every character on the show. No one has earned it more than me. <laughs> They were always promoted as the main characters of the show, and to top it all, the DVD cover of the first season doesn't even feature Howard and Raj. Even more, whenever there's a listing of the cast members, Parsons, Cuoco, and Galecki always come first, while Howard and Raj's characters come later. Although this may seem like simple nuances, it was very important for the characters to develop properly. Eventually, Howard and Raj found their own stories, growing from the shadows of supporting characters. That's funny. I I always thought Howard was nature's way of saying the Wallowitz line ends here. Their impact began to stretch into the very fabric of the storyline, so the producers had no choice but to ground them and promote them to more stable roles. Now they had their own background story plot and unique storyline. Although the bulk of the attention still rested on the top three and they still got more screen time, Howard and Raj could now enjoy what it felt like to be in the spotlight. Too busy to call? He wasn't too busy to binge watch Hot in Cleveland with my Hulu password. <laughs> Number nine, actors had to promote the show. When you earn a million dollars per episode on a show, it would be quite hard to stop talking about it. As part of the promotional campaign for The Big Bang Theory, some of the main characters were required to appear on talk shows across America, spreading the word about the show. No public appearance was ever aimed at any personal gain. Everywhere these stars went, they went to push the show to more people. It was as though the actors were also part of the marketing team. The greatest part of it all was that these shows allowed fans to see the actors behind behind the scenes. It allowed for an exclusive glimpse into their real personalities and who the men behind the characters really were. On stage, these men and women were masks. I'm very awkward when I get recognized and make it awkward for everyone in my surrounding environment. Portraying a characters born from the figments of their imaginations. But on these talk shows, they are able to express themselves. From The Tonight Show to Ellen, various talk shows have hosted the cast of The Big Bang Theory. And every time the gang comes out, the chemistry is always undeniable. Even when they're not filming, the cast of The Big Bang Theory have built a bond of friendship that extends beyond the world of cameras and scripts. But every time you see them appear on talk shows, it's always to promote The Big Bang Theory and nothing more. And I remember seeing I, I was 6'3 when IMDb came out. And I remember seeing yeah. Simon <laughs> and being like, wow, you are not as tall as I thought. Number eight, cast cannot openly discuss their love life. While the cast members were committed to the series, they had to adhere to a strict rule, which restricted them from ever talking about their personal relationships. But as they say, life imitates art. Oh, Leonard. <laughs> 
In a strange twist of fate, the relationship between on-screen characters Leonard and Penny took a deeper dimension. And at the same time, the actors who played these roles also began writing their love stories. But that's not the craziest part of this story. As soon as Leonard and Penny broke up in the series, Kaylee and Johnny also parted ways. Coincidence? We are pretty sure the actors felt so strongly about their on-screen breakup that it would destroy their real relationship. I haven't been to a lot of parties like this, but what does a physics rumble look like? <laughs> but the shocking part was that no one knew about Johnny Galecki and Kaylee Cuoco's relationship right until they broke up. As part of their contract, cast members were forbidden from speaking about their relationships, as the producers believed this may cause tension on set and complicate the shooting process. Thankfully, the cast members who took things to another level did this with the highest level of discretion without obstructing the production process. Number seven, actors had to commit or get written out. Nowadays, actors sometimes walk out of their roles with the confidence that whenever they choose to come back, the seat would be waiting for them. But that's not the way it was on the set of The Big Bang Theory. Any actor who chooses to walk away from the show understands that there is no coming back. A silly question. Who else will give our audience causal explanations of natural phenomena? Unlike other shows, where certain characters have their roles sitting pretty and waiting for them, producers of The Big Bang Theory are always quick to write out any character that intentionally walks out on the show. The best example of such an incident would be the case of Kate Micucci. But uh, it's because I had lung uh, cancer surgery yesterday. The actress who played Raj's girlfriend Lucy at some point in the series. During her time on the show, Lucy was seen as the perfect girl for Raj, and everyone was rooting for their romance both on-screen and off-screen. But Mikuchi saw bigger opportunities coming her way, a chance to feature in her own show called Garfunkel and Oates. And she left the Big Bang Theory. One season later, her show was over, gone into the tombs where failed TV shows find their eternal rest. But she could never look back. Even if she wanted to, there was nowhere to come back to. As soon as Mikuchi walked away from the show, her character was written off in such a way that it would even make no sense to try and revive her. So, every member of the cast kept this at heart, and whoever decided it was time to go did so knowing there was no coming back from that. Number 6. Eating on Camera As with any sitcom, the Big Bang Theory was filled with many food scenes. From restaurant scenes to home meals, characters were treated to sumptuous meals on set, one that they must not eat. Do I look puffy? I feel puffy. <laughs> As a rule on the set of The Big Bang Theory, actors were not allowed to eat the food served, although they have to present the illusion that they are actually eating. In order to make the scenes look realistic, the actors have to keep shuffling the food across their plates to make it look as though they're eating. This was to make sure that the actors didn't get bloated during retakes. But of course, there were scenes where the actors had to actually eat the food. For example, cases where the joke was hinged on the actor delivering his lines with a mouth full of food. And she's a neuroscientist. It's like, what's she even doing on this paper? <laughs> Of course, the actor will have to chow down on some of the food to make sure that the scene appears realistic. As easy as this may sound, pretending to eat without actually eating takes a whole lot of acting skills. And even after finding out that these guys don't actually eat, watching these food scenes will inspire more appreciation for the acting skills that went into the production of The Big Bang Theory. Before we go on with the rest of the video, here's our subscribers pick. As we explore the strange rules that the cast of The Big Bang Theory had to follow, two unique laws stand out. First, the fact that the actors had to fake eating, as eating on set was quite forbidden. How our favorite characters were able to create this perfect illusion is quite impressive. Of course, on the other side, we have the rule about facial hair, which highlights the sacrifices these stars had to pay to deliver their iconic performances. Which of these rules shocked you the most? Let us know in the comments down below. Now back to the video. Number 5. Simon and Kunal almost left the show. Okay, this one is not a rule per se, but it remains one of the biggest issues to ever hit the show during its runtime. At a point during the show's reign, actors Simon Helberg and Kunal Nayar, who played Howard and Raj respectively, were almost written out of the show. Yeah, I know. I'm flying out tomorrow. I'm gonna surprise them with the ring. 
This was before the top three transformed into the top five, and the two characters were considered secondary. Due to the wide gap between the paychecks of the top three and the rest of the cast, Howard and Raj launched a complaint to the show's executives, demanding an increase in their pay as well. In their defense, the two actors believed they contributed their quota into the show every time, so they deserved to be compensated for their talent and labor. As the tug of war raged on, Wait, he always wanted to be an astronaut. Simon and Kunal started playing hard to get, and as a result, the producers began considering writing them off the series totally. As a continuous contingency plan, the writers devised another plotline, where the characters of Raj and Howard would be effectively eliminated from the show, while they may also be replaced by other new characters. After a while, the intensity of the whole case began to shake Simon and Kunal's stance. Although they wanted a raise, they also didn't want to risk losing their job, so they settled for what the studio was offering, and the series continued as though there was never any drama. Number 4. We Don't Talk About the Initial Plot since The Big Bang Theory was a smash hit from the very first episode, it's easy to forget that everything started on very rocky grounds. The forgotten pilot episode, the plot that was never meant to be. You got me out of my pants. <laughs> Learned my lesson. And the scorned actress that got dropped all part of a forgotten history that continues to haunt the Big Bang Theory. According to the earlier drafts, the show was entirely different from what we see today. Originally, the show featured only Leonard and Sheldon, but their personalities were written so differently. The duo were also complemented with a nasty version of Penny, which was known by another name, and was written as a female nerd. But when the original pilot was aired before a test audience, <laughs> Put some clothes on, I'll get my purse, and dinner is on me, okay? The producers got only yawns and complaints about the characters, so they knew they had to switch things up, and the result speaks for itself. Today, you can find the bits and pieces of this old plot on YouTube, but for the cast and crew, it is forbidden to ever talk about it. Number 3. Kevin Sussman. Only got credited when he was featured. Many people don't realize this, but Stewart had been promoted to a main cast member since as far as season six. However, he is never treated as part of the main friend group. When I had the chance, I was scared, and now that I want to, you're stuck with Mitch. From the plot line to the pay, to even the order in which their names were written, Kevin Sussman was placed in a separate class from those he formed an on-screen friendship with. Even crazier is the fact that Sussman only got credited for the episodes he appeared in. Whenever he was absent from any episode, his name would not even be written as part of the cast. However, as far as the overall cast billing is concerned, Kevin Sussman is considered a part of the group. Number 2. The Order on the Posters at this point, it's pretty obvious that the Big Bang Theory takes its casting hierarchy quite seriously. Nowhere else is this more pronounced than in the design of the posters. Of course, occupying the front row would be Parsons, Galecki, and Cuoco, the top three. Then the second build cast comes in, Simon and Kunal, and then at the back we have Melissa and Mayim, the third build cast. Although it may sound like an unfair ranking, we should understand that Melissa and Mayim weren't even supposed to play such vital roles in the first place, so being cast in such a role was quite exhilarating. Thank you for pointing that out, Sheldon. Anytime. Number one, some characters were written out. In the ever-evolving world of the Big Bang Theory, only the strongest were guaranteed immunity. Just give them a chance. Uh, science has a history of difficult people. Apart from the top three characters who couldn't be written out, everyone else was at the risk of losing their place. This was the case with Laura Spencer, although it still remains a mystery why she was written out. Then there's the case of Sarah Gilbert, who the writers claimed had overstayed her welcome, and since there was no creative direction for her character, she had to be written off. Fortunately, some of these characters were written in such a way that they could reappear as guests on the show at any point in time. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next one.